thinking about what it is to be a Conservative? Well, I think that's partly the point of party conference, really, is to discuss these ideas, not just at MPs and the media, but actually ordinary members as well. And for those of your listeners who haven't had the joy of going to Conservative Party conference, essentially the, the bits that make the news are the main stage debates where cabinet ministers make their speeches. But actually the really exciting stuff happens around the edges, in the fringes, in kind of breakout spaces, where media groups or think tanks like the Centre for Social Justice will host different events and have different speakers, yes, from politics, but from a broad uh, range of society to, to have a discussion about these things and to challenge the consensus and ask, what does it mean to be conservative? What should be in our manifesto? What do we think about a whole range of issues? And ordinary members get to chip in and share their ideas. So co conference is supposed to be a melting point of lots of different ideas. And this one will be no different, apart from the fact that clearly within the next year or so, we yeah. will have an election. So it's a very important time to be thinking about those ideas and those policies. Fly a kite for us then, Miriam, now. Give us an idea that you think should be seriously considered for the, for the next election that might make it, might it into a manifesto. Give us an idea that, that you think would, would shake things up. How long have you got? Um, I've got a few. So uh, one of the things that I'm really passionate about is families and children. That's what I spend most of my time in, in Parliament kind of working on. And we've got a huge anomaly in our country, in our tax system, about how, the way that we treat families. And families in this country pay, pay 20, 30, 40 percent more tax than families in many other similar countries. And there are complex reasons for that. But basically, it's the way that we don't recognise families and households in the tax system. So, of course, there's massive amounts in the news about cost of living, how much parents are struggling to feed their children, to clothe their children, to pay mortgages. And of course, that's partly due to inflation and things like that. But it's also in large part due to our tax system and the way that it penalises families. And I personally think that having children and bringing them up well is one of the best things you can do to serve society and that we should not only celebrate that, but support it in the tax system. So one thing I would really like to see, make it into the manifesto, is a reform of our tax system to put families first. Because strong families build a foundation for the future, not just socially, and giving people the best start in life, but also making great employees, uh, people in stable families earn more for all their lives. So, and what, what do you mean by a family, Miriam? Do you mean a, a, a man and a woman with two kids? Do you, could it be two men, two women, and two kids? Could it be a single parent who, who, who not who are, who are single for, through no fault of their own? Are you in danger of rewarding a certain type of people who got lucky and punishing a certain type of people who have not quite ma managed to, 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 to proceed in the same way? I think all families should be supported. Anybody who's raising children absolutely needs support. They need our thanks. They need the support of the whole community. And of course, the support of the tax and benefit system. Absolutely. And I take my hat off to single parents. I meet a lot of single parents, uh, both in my constituency and, and in the things I do in Parliament. And they are doing an absolutely unbelievable job. But that doesn't mean that we can't, we need, we can't be truthful about the fact that there is uh, an ideal for children, which is to be with both biological parents. Children in those situations do do well. I'll say again, I'm not saying we shouldn't support all families. We absolutely should. But it's very interesting that, that the UK has become the family breakdown capital of the West. We have the highest rate of family breakdown of any OECD country. Nearly half of children now in the UK will not finish their childhood with both biological par parents. And that has huge implications for children, for poverty, especially around half of single parent families are living below the poverty line. That is not a good thing. And so we need to think seriously about the causes of family breakdown. And what we can do as a whole society to support families better. That's not to say families never should split up. There's never a good reason. Of course there are. Uh, but I do think we should be asking questions about why we have such a problem in this country so does, compared to others. Does that follow then, Miriam, that say, uh, but you talk about biological parents. Would you say that a biological man and a woman with two kids should be rewarded more than other types of people in the same situation? I'm, I'm not saying you're not going to support everyone, but should you actually go further to reward the traditional nuclear family? Is that what you're saying? I don't think it's about rewarding. I think it's about making it possible. And the thing at the moment is that it's so hard to build a family um, under the current economic conditions because of the way that the tax system penalises people. So, for example, if you're on benefits at the moment, for some families, parents are actually better off living apart. Now, that's not a good situation for the children. It's not a good situation for the parents. It's ridiculous. We know how important it is for children to be part of stable homes, living with mum and dad, if at all possible. So why does the tax and benefit system 
system make it so difficult. It also, our tax system, makes it much more difficult for one parent to choose to stay at home or work part time to do that really important job of raising the children. Again, because you're penalised if you yeah. don't share your income equally. So there's so many things we could do. Not it's not about rewarding or punishment, punishing. It's about making it possible to raise a family in this country in a way where raising children is something that we celebrate rather than something that we just see as a private matter that people can get on with.